Hello. Okay. Hmm. hmm. And check that. It's a Facebook on the stream. Look at Facebook. Ah, yeah. That's good. Magana siya. Ang ano lang talaga. Hindi ko pwedeng ipri. I announce yung. Ah, i gawa ng link yung live, no? But it's working. Pag nag-type ako ng comment, kaya makukuha kaya. I guess not. Old school pa rin yung comment catching natin. Maybe. Oh well. Kung ni-refresh ko yung chat. Hindi, one non talaga. Hindi talaga siya update. Hindi. <laughs> oh well. YouTube comments pa rin ang prioritize natin. This music is cool. Okay, we need Asus ROG Phone 2 Strix. Saan nakasulat yung Strix? Wala pa dito sa website nila. Strix. Asus. Um... Tignan muna natin Asus. Baka meron sila dun sa brand page. Ganda sana kaso late lagi i-release eh. Yung alin, Mark Roger? Yung Asus? Saan nila in-announce? Mga ano kasi yung nakita ko mga announcement eh. Hindi Asus mismo yung announcement. Si, si Game 1 nag-announce. Game 1 PH. Tsaka si... Sino pa ba yung mga nagbebenta? iTech Which is basically si Game 1 din yun um, Sino nagbebenta ng... Ng ano? Ng steering wheel um, And then sino pa ba yun? <laughs> Halatang di ako nagpupunta ng wall Di ko kilala eh What is this? Trustmaster T300 RS? Game 1 Racing Wheel Stand. Okay, gumamit siya ng Game 1 na stand. Hindi maganda yung Racing Wheel Stand ni Game 1 ata eh. Yeah, then, oh, yeah. It's, oh, God. Yeah. T3PA pedals yung gamit niya. Wheel Stand 490. Magkano ba yung tanya? It was used, just used, just, just used while waiting for find my fanatic. Holy crap, may fanatic siya. Oh, man. I love these. Wala lang talaga akong pera, 28,000. T300 RS ni Trustmaster and the T3PA shifter is uh, yung mas professional na racing, racing wheel, gaming racing wheel setup na nabibili. T300 RS is Thumbs up. Ang ano lang talaga, mas matibay si Logitech. Tsaka mas magandang yung ano, yung... Vilman. O nga pala, Vilman. Tama ka dyan. Tama ba? Kasi, hindi, nakita ko sa, ano ba ito, sa ating group chat. Ako yung nagpost eh. <laughs> May sinera ko sa ating group chat eh. Si Asus Republic of Gamers pala nagpost. Okay, and then may isa pa akong pinost ng... Ito, Billman nga. 
34995. Pero balikan na lang natin si Asus Republic of Gamers na lang ang puntahan natin. Ito, meron siya mga announcement kung saan pwedeng bumili Ano to? Mouse? Hindi, ayoko nyan Ito The ROG Phone 2 Is not done yet Not done yet daw Ganda naman ito Meron pa siyang racing ano? Racing shoes? Ding! Tsaka maganda eh <laughs> Tignan mo yung ano yung bahay niya, ang ganda rin nung kanyang ano. Siguro ano to. Medyo mamahalin yung dating nung kanyang condo. Sabi ano siya eh. Taga San siya. Green Hills Shangri-La Mega Mall. Taga, taga San Juan siguro to, Green Hills. Ang hindi lang maganda yung ano yung stand niya. Ayoko nung stand niya. Kasi may ano eh merong ayoko ko kung mahilig kayo sa mga ganitong games. May May harang sa pagitan ng paamo. Ganun, para ka nakabisikleta. Eh, hindi ka naman nagbibisikleta pag nag-mamaneo uh, ka. Walang ano. So, what's up mga kuya mga ate? Ilan tayo sa Facebook? Buksan ko dito. Ay, hindi. Kailangan ko ilipat dito yun. Y7P. Y7P? Magana naman siguro ang ating ano, di ba? So, ang magana nga. <laughs> <laughs> Minsan kailangan talaga manigurado eh. <laughs> uh, What's up John Alvin Salvador Sa ating uh, Facebook chat Welcome to the show Malapit na tayo magsimula Siguro magsimula tayo kahit mas maaga ng konti Simula tayo ng mga 3 minutes from now <laughs> Wala ka shadow ano eh. Alam niyo kasi dahil sa ano eh, sa Incob eh. Na Incob ang mundo eh. So wala masyadong naglalabas sa mga bagong telepono. Pero uh, si Realme mag-a-announce ng ano to? Anong i-announce nila? Ano sinulat ko? X50 something, ano ba pangalan noon? Eh, Realme X50 Pro. Tama naman pala ang sinulat ko eh. Realme X50 Pro ang uh, i-announce ni Realme sa Lunes, January, February 24. Nako, malapit na matapos ang Pebrero. Rafael Santiago, second to you, sir. <laughs> What's up, mga kuya, mga ate? Um, kailangan ko na siguro, kung sa group na ako mag-chat, sa, sa tingin ko mas maganda rin tingin, siguro diretso sa group na ganito. Uh, mas maganda lang tignan. Um, so, yun. Ang ating show for today, tatlo lang mostly ang topics is ito nasa aking. Ginawa ko ng wallpaper ko para madaling <laughs> malang, madaling balikan. Ang ating topics today is Huawei Y7P. Hindi ko maintindihan ano, sino nag invento ng, ano, ng mga pangalan ng self-smartphone ni, ano, ni Huawei. Huawei is Y7P. Esports course in college, yan. Uh, isa sa mga ma maiinit na maiinit na ang balitaktakan ngayong gabi. Mga ma'am, mga sir, ang esports course daw uman di umano ay ilalabas. Hindi, no, ano, ay ano ba mag, ano bang ano bang paano ba mag uh, magsalita si Bo Mike Enriquez? Ito pong esports course daw sa Lyceum. College of... Ano ba yun? Engineer? <laughs> Ito daw, umano, di umano, ay magtuturo sa mga bata ng paano maging trabahador sa industriya 
ng esports. Yan. Yan ang ano. Why series for entry ata nila yun? Yeah, pero ang, yun na nga eh. Yung hindi kasi, hindi ko gusto yung... Well, nakaka-confuse lang. Parang sa <laughs> yung mga ganitong entry level ni Huawei, hindi mo alam kung alin yung bago eh. Hindi mo alam yung... Y7P, very confusing letters and numbers. Parang jumbo letters and numbers lang siya. Parang pag uh, may kinumausap sa'yo, oh, yan yung telepono mo, Y7P. Ano yung Y7P? <laughs> Ah, uh, ano lang 'yan. Pero alam ko naman na parang nagsimula ata sila sa mga sa mga Y5, mga ganyan, Y9. Um nagkagulo-gulo lang, medyo naguguluhan na ako sa Y7P. I think kailangan nila mag-isip na ng bagong naming scheme sa entry level nila. Um but uh, pag-usapan natin 'yan mamaya kasi medyo sensitive. Hindi naman sensitive. Uh, interesting topic ang Huawei Y7P. And then lala, uh, pag-usapan si ROG Strix. Ano, uh, ROG Phone 2 Strix Edition na hindi ko maintindihan kung ano ginagawa ni Asus minsan kung bakit um, parang mins- minsan minsan hindi mo alam na uh, hindi ko ma- <laughs> Bakit din nila ilabas ito agad? <laughs> May Google Apps pa din kaya ayan, yan ang magiging usapan natin. So uh, let's start the show na kasi 3 minutes na. So, actually 9 at uh, 10 o'clock dapat tayo magsisimula but since konti lang yung topics and then uh, para ma ano uh, the early bird gets the worm tayo. Actually nakakaasar yung by year lang minsan. Well, uh, depend since di ba yung ban ng US. Yes, Ralph Rafael Abisami, Santiago. Totoo yan. So, uh, let's start the show with the Huawei Y7P topic. No? So, this is the newest entry-level phone ni Huawei. Yan. So, the Huawei Y7P. And uh, in all, uh, for all intents and purposes, si Huawei Y7P, maganda yung specs, no? Um, snap, <laughs> tag dito, hindi siya Snapdragon. Kirin 710 yung processor. So, medyo mid-range yung processor niya. Kirin eh. Kirin 710 eh. Pag 7 yan, medyo mid-range din yan. Medyo sinasabayan nila yung numbering scheme ni um, ni Snapdragon. And then, tignan mo yung specs. Meron siyang 48 inch, uh, 48 megapixels. <laughs> Just ko, mamatay na ako. 40, bo- boomer na ata ako eh. Boomer. I'm a boomer. Uh, 48 megapixel triple AI camera. Uh, maganda yung dating niya Maganda yung display Malaking display uh, Meron siyang punch hole So it's one of the most affordable punch hole camera fo- uh, p- Punch hole phones na may di- uh, Punch hole display Sa industriya natin no? um, Ang pagkakaalam ko nasa 10,000 siya no? 9,990 Magkano ba siya? Sige nga Lazada Shopee 9 O eh? 20 mil? <laughs> Fake news ito ah Paano siya naging 20,000? Huh? Huawei Y7P price Ayo, 9,990 Niloloko tayo ng price eh Eh bakit? Sana lang Okay, Yuga Tech Si Yuga Tech na lang Para lang makita yung presyo um, so, ang kanyang price is Price at 9990 So, 10,000 pesos uh, And then, ang pre-order niya is February 17 to 27 Eh, bakit? February 17, eh, di may pre-order na ngayon Eh, bakit 20 mil pa rin siya? Huawei? Sino? Wha- what? Wait Pareho ba tayo nakikita? Shopee O dito sa Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Ayaw ba makabenta ni Huawei sa <laughs> Ano nangyayari dito? Exclusive ba sa ano? Sa Shopee? Anyway So, 10,000 peso siya, no? Um and so maganda yung specs niya Personally, I think okay yung specs Yung likod, na, medyo nagagandaan ako Although hindi ko alam sa personal Kasi hindi ko pa siya nakikita sa personal um, 
Eh, fingerprint scanner sa likod, triple camera sa likod with LED flash. Medyo uh, cool yung... Eh, gusto ko yung kulay. Hindi ko maintindihan kung ano yung reflect, reflection ba ito. Parang may kulay siya na square or reflection na square. Hindi ko magets. Uh, punch hole display, handheld na, handheld night mode, normal na yan. 48 megapixel main camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide, then 2 megapixel depth. So, be, de, very decent uh, selection ng sen sensors dito. Meron siyang main na 48 and then two, uh, 8 megapixel ultra wide, which is decent. Uh, yung depth camera, obviously, for bokeh-bokeh yan. Sometimes useful, sometimes eh. Uh, supposedly, ito yung mga kuha niya. Hindi, ako, hindi ko sure, pero mukhang okay naman. And uh, usually, yung camera software ni Huawei is pretty good. Alam nyo naman, Huawei P30 Pro, Mate 30, mga ganyan. Um, and then, yun yung specs, 4,000 mAh battery above average for this price point. Yung fingerprint unlock, sayang, nasa likod. Um, unfortunately, hindi, hindi pa niya tinamaan yung nasa harap na fingerprint, no? Um, nauuso na kasi yung harap na fingerprint. Even though, para sa akin, hindi naman ganun ka-importante. But these days, luxury item yun. So, mas, mag mas luxurious ka pag um, nasa harap sa display yung fingerprint sensor mo. Anyway, 4 gigs and 64 EMUI 9.1 So, uh, ito yung uh, sasabihin ko sana. Papahulain ko sana kayo kung ano yung negative sa ano eh. Papahulain ko sana sa inyo. Sige nga, hulaan nyo kung ano yung negative sa Huawei Y7P. So far, so good. So far, so good. Nasa 10,000 pesos siya. 9,990. Okay? Hula. <laughs> Hindi ko muna sasabihin para meron tayong suspense. Baka, baka merong baka alam sa kanya si Chan. <laughs> Smart gallery searching, personal video ringtone. So pretty standard Huawei Fair type of device for 10,000 pesos. I think the specs are pretty nice. Um, meron ba siyang headphone jack? Tingnan na kung may headphone. Siguro naman may headphone jack. No? Pero it's a handsome, handsome looking phone. The specs are not... Ah, yeah, HD Plus lang siya. Okay. Mm, okay. Kirin 710F. Android 9, 4 gigs and 64 with micro SD. 8 megapixel front camera. Okay, 8 megapixel front cam. Not bad. 5 volts 2 amp charging, so wala siyang fast charging. Um, and then, Bluetooth 5 is good. Micro USB. Mm -hmm. And then we have 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Sensors, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, yun. Yun ang specs, yun ang ano. It looks nice. Um, I think it's probably plastic, pero maganda lang yung pictures, no? So, let's talk about what the... What is the negative dun sa telepono? Um, Assalamu alaikum sa'yo, lucky po. Um, hopefully, hindi ko na-butcher yung, ano, yung pagkasabi sa sa ano niya oh bayan hindi ko mag refresh uh, yan resize okay ah uh, muntik na ako ma disappoint sa price bigla sabi ni ah oh nga eh di ba bakit 20 mil sa ano sa Lazada dude <laughs> oh man ah uh, apektado ng Enco ang Chinese smartphone manufacturers kaya siguro slow pace yes totoo yan um Maraming smartphone releases na go hold off right now. Um, kahit si... Sino ba to? Si Huawei... Hindi, hindi Huawei. Si Xiaomi... Mm, P... Uh, eh, anong pangalan nun? Xiaomi ano? Pro. Pro version ng... K30, K30 Pro. Sorry. Oh, na, na maus pa ako. K30 Pro. According din kay Kuya... Ray Kyle. No? Sabi niya... Um, K30 Pro. Pro, yan. K30 Pro daw, according to Kuya Ray Kyle, is Snapdragon 865. Ano pa bang sinabi niya? Um, hindi ko na mabasa. Anyway, uh, kung gusto niyo basahin lang mga leaks ni Kuya Ray Kyle, pasok kayo sa BTS Community Group Chat or sa kanyang page. Um, yeah, maraming apektado ng NCOV na smartphone releases. So... Wag muna tayo umasa na may mga bagong releases. Even though hindi, kasi most lang mga smartphone galing Shenzhen eh. But, basically buong China talaga medyo in, in, ano, in quarantine mode, in medyo... Kasi, ma mahirap na yung ano, mahirap na yung... Uh, meron maapektuhan sa na, <laughs> sa, na smartphone eh. Kaya na-cancel yung Mo Mobile World Congress last week eh. Dahil maraming takot sa... 
uh, NCOV sa coronavirus. Ano? Uh, slow release naman, halos lahat dahil wala NCOV. Dah dahil sa NCOV, yes. Uh, kahit iPhone at Nintendo Switch, hindi naman. Well, Nintendo Switch, ang nabagalan ng Nintendo Switch is yung production nila. So, uh, sabi nila, magkaka slight shortage daw ng Nintendo Switch. So, kung wala pa kayo Nintendo Switch, make sure na bumili na kayo. <laughs> <laughs> Medyo ano lang, mahirap nang maghanap ng mag, magiging mahirap na maghanap ng Nintendo Switch. So, yan, tama si Kuya Mark Roger. Walang Google Apps si Y7P. Wala siyang wala siyang Google Apps, no? Um hindi na binabanggit. <laughs> Walang nakasulat dito eh. Um uh, yan. So, ayun lang nakasulat. This product is preloaded. Nas, ano yung asterisk na yun? So, kaya yung asterisk na yun? Ito siguro dito. Um, no? Saan yung asterisk na yun? Anyway, yan, yan. Meron lang super fine print dito. <laughs> Pag binasa nyo. Um, this product is preloaded with Huawei App Gallery uh, instead of Google Play. So, wala siyang Google Play. It's a big bummer for a lot of consumers. I know... Well, technically, pwede kang mag-install ng Google Play daw, pero hindi ko pa sinubukan and marami daw, maraming pa, every time nagkaroon ng solusyon para mag-install ng Google Play sa mga ganitong devices, minsan nagkaka, nabablock din eh. And then recently nga, nag, nagbawal si Google ng pag-install. Saan yun? Uh, hindi ko naman alam kung ano yung gagawin ni Google kung uh, warns uh, Huawei install Google Play. <laughs> Nanguhula na lang ako. Kasi, ayan, ayan. Fandroid. Si Fandroid basahin natin. Uh, so, sabi ni Fandroid, ay, si, sabi ni Google, warns against sideloading the Andro its Android apps on newer Huawei devices. Um, so, ang sabi niya is, because of the government restrictions described above, new Huawei device models made available to the public after May 16, 2019. May 16, 2019. That's last year. In the 2020, have not been able to go through the security process, nor will they have Play Protect reloaded. As a result, they are considered uncertified and will not be able to use utilize Google's apps and services. I know there are workaround na lumalabas about this, um, pero yon you have it's it's sort of like uh, at your own risk, no? Um, baka matanggal yung 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 workaround. So, pag nawala yung workaround, wala ka official way to install Google Apps. And, uh, may mga nagsasabi na hindi naman ganun ka-importante na may Google Apps. So, depende na sa iyo uh, But, obviously, for a lot of people, it's a big advantage to have Google Apps. Uh, they would not even, most people, marami sa taong, most wouldn't consider using an Android phone na walang Google Apps. So, uh, unfortunately, the Huawei Y7P is... Wala siyang Google Apps. I think si ano nga eh, si, si, oh, ano ba to? Si Honor 5T, merong Google Apps, but this one does not. So, sad news, but um, I don't think anybody should be looking into phones na wala, uh, ano. Kasi sa 10,000 pesos, you can buy so many different phones eh. Ako, personally, I would suggest the Redmi Note 7 or 8, no? They're 10,000 pesos, they're 1080p, they're Amazing quality phones. Si Redmi Note 8 has 64 megapixels. And based on my experience with the Redmi Note 7, I have a Redmi Note 8 na hindi pa bukas. Nandun, nasa kahon niya. Um, soon. Bubuksan ko siya soon. Kasi meron pa ako inatupag. But based from my experience with Redmi Note 7, I, I think you're getting a very good phone. Even though may ads si Xiaomi. <laughs> from time lang ni Xiaomi is the ads. Uh, so, yun ang ating uh, Redmi uh, Redmi tuloy um, Huawei Y7P topic no? uh, Let's see Oink Kailangan lakihan to uh, Do you think iPhone SE 2 will happen? May rumors this year eh? May rumors this year about iPhone SE 2 um, Siguro Uh May, may pag-asa siya kasi I think nagre-recognize na rin ni Apple na meron talagang ano eh, meron talagang tipid tipid type na consumer sa smartphone industry and I, I think baka hindi SE2 yung tawag kasi pinalta nila yung budget branding nila eh yung napansin mo yung iPhone XR diba yung R nila 
yun yung budget version, no? Uh, but ang maganda sana sa SE yung maliit siya. So wala pang masyad, wala nang masyadong maliit na iPhone ngayon. They should really remake a small iPhone. Um Balay na pala ako. What's up, Farmer Sanchez? Yes, medyo inagahan natin by about 3 minutes yung start. But don't worry, kakasimula lang tayo. And don't worry, may kli lang yung show kasi konti lang yung topic. <laughs> ah, medyo sinusubukan ko yung format na medyo relax lang na may kli. Kasi dati sinasaksa ko lahat, dinadagdagan ko ng dinadagdagan yung topics ng show. Eh. Ah, ngayon medyo bebuwasan natin. Para medyo simple lang, tsaka hindi tayo natataranta. Um, ayoko ng segregation ng App Store, hirap yan. Yeah, um, personally, I wouldn't risk it. Sa dami ng telepono ng available ngayon, um, mahirap mag-risk on something na mag install ka pa ng Google Play outside, no? Na 50, sabihin nating 50-50 success or sabihin nating 70-30 success, 70% successful, 30% medyo alanganin. Mahirap pa rin yun kasi you're still taking a risk, no? Uh, sa 10,000 pesos, ang dami mo na mabibiling telepono. May Realme dyan, may Xiaomi dyan. There's so many things. Um, personally, medyo na naiilang lang ako na hindi siya, seven, hindi siya 1080p display. Parang bakit bumabalik tayo sa... Ano, sa <laughs> bumabalik tayo sa 720p. I don't understand. But, um, yun na nga. Uh, may mga tao talaga hindi ganun ka-importante yung display. Or sometimes, advantage pa dahil nakakapag-game sila. Anyway, that's not the topic for today. Yung uh, topic na Y7P. Um, I think it's I think it's more or less dead on arrival. Uh, sa China, walang problema kasi they don't use Google services sa China. Eh. But dito, I think this this is please. Just just ignore it. No? So, uh, let's read some comments. Kasi may balak ata mga Chinese brands sa gumawa ng app store nila. They're, they're already sort of... Um, working towards it. And then sa China, wala naman talagang Google Play. Uh, so, kaya, pag nakita nyo, di ba pag nag-import kayo ng Xiaomi phone sa mga Zund, sa Zunod, <laughs> tawag ko sa kanila Zunod kasi mukhang, Zu, mukhang O yung dalawang pangalang, yung basta yung D. Sa Zunod, uh, pag nag-import ka ng Chinese market na Xiaomi phone, wala silang Google Store. They have a different store. Uh, so China, Google is not allowed inside, no? So, they use different app stores doon. Uh, ang lagay is, nakikipag-partner ngayon si Huawei with Xiaomi, with Oppo, Vivo, OnePlus. Sa loob ng China lang, to create their own app store. And may, may, may konti silang reasoning kung bakit. May, may tama sila kung bakit sila nag sorts of communicate na ganun. Kasi nga, wala nga Google sa China. Sa labas ng China, the only reason why aalis ka ng Google Play Store is because ayaw mo magbayad sa Google Play ng porsyento ng bayad sa'yo. Kasi, syempre, pag nasa Google Play ka, you pay a percent of your earnings to Google. Um, hindi ko matandaan kung 30% yung binabayad ng app stores sa Google, ng mga applications na ano. So, kung bumili ka ng, like, $5 worth of gems. Nagbabayad yung Clash of Clans. <laughs> Or whatever yung binila mo ng gems. Nagbabayad sila nung 30% nun. Typically 30%. Di ko alam kung ano yung official ngayon. Ha? Nagbabayad sila ng 30% ng $5 to wait, 30% of $5 is what? $1.50? At, eh, $1.50 actually. Marunong pala akong magmath. So, nagbabayad sila to Google. So, doon kumikita si Google sa App Store nila. Um, kato, if you think about it, that's why si Fortnite, uh, Fortnite, umalis sila sa Google Store para hindi sila nagbabayad ng 30%. Sa um, sa Google, sa Google every time may bumili ng V-Bucks. No? Anyway, yun yun. Um, Mark Roger, kasi may balak na tama. Ay, okay. Uh, Kirin 710F na naman, GG na talaga si Huawei. Hindi nyo ba? <laughs> yeah. I, I think 710 is okay, but it, it's not top, but it's okay. Uh, Benson, sab, sabi ni Benson Santana, Zun Zon D. Yan ang pronunciation ni na Vince ng yeah, Unbox Diaries. Zun D. Okay, that, that sort of, yeah. Makes sense, Zun D. Pero ano pa rin siya, Zunod pa rin siya sa akin. <laughs> Wag niyo na ako i- Wag niyo na ako i-correct. Zunod siya sa akin, Zunod. Hey, Rainer Lizada, what's up? How are you, dude? Si Rainer Lizada is uh, 
on on our Facebook streamu. Welcome, welcome. Ah, uh, pasensya na yung Facebook walang overlay comments dito pero sinusubukan kong bantayan doon sa uh, mismong stream. Anyway, that's the topic for the Huawei Y7 Pino. Let's move on to ating Tier 1. Tier 1. Mag- gusto nyo ba kayo ba ay gustong mag-aral ng esports? Mag-aral ng esports sa kolehiyo? Rainer Zada nasa YouTube na. What's up? Um so, merong trending ngayon. Yan. <laughs> Feeling ko, alam mo yun? Okay, ganito yan. Eh. Sa mga ganitong topics, yung mga topics na napupunta sa mainstream media, Feeling ko, may, kasi si, si, hindi naman sa nag-iaibang ano, si GMA mahilig silang magtawag ng mga vloggers tungkol sa ganitong bagay. Yung mga, yung mga ganitong, Sasagutin ng tech expert kung ano yung opinion niya sa ganitong bagay. Feeling ko lang baka may mga tumawag sa akin dito para sa ano sa interview tungkol sa bagong ano pong ano alam niyo sa ganitong bagong curriculum ng esports <laughs> esports uh, college course ng ano to Lyceum, di ba? Tama naman yung natanda ko, di ba? LPU is Lyceum. Nanin niguro lang. Uh, Lyceum of the Philippines University. Sa Intramuros pala yun. Ang layo! Oh my God! Nakakatakot yung traffic. Um, dito na lang mi sa YouTube. Anong sabi? Uh, pero nalito pa rin ako ipano i-pronounce. Eh, siguro pag nakapunta ako sa store nila mismo. Hindi, tawagin mo sila Zunod. <laughs> <laughs> um, dito na lang kami sa YouTube para kita mi uh, Wow Esports Pro na daw Parang hybrid na business admin Gave debut in course ah, Well, okay So, ito yan um, Ang pagkakaintindi ko sa kanya Dalawa yung track, no? So I think pareho silang BS Esports, no? BS Esports Bachelor of Science in Esports Pero may track ng development side nung de- Kung gusto mo mag-programming or uh, esports management track which is uh, understandable pero feeling ko dapat din split nila to into dalawang courses uh, bachelor of science in esports management bachelor of science in game design kasi game design is a legitimate na trabaho or game development is a legitimate na trabaho also um, the thing is uh, meron na rin si ano nito eh Alam nyo marami nagre-react dito pero ito lang, magkukwento ako. Dito, ma- dito mahahaba yung ating show eh dahil kasi ano na naman to eh. Dito mahahaba yung usapan kasi maging magano na naman ako ng mga tangent natin eh. Uh. Grad na ako ng bachelor's degree, pwede pa kaya ako mag-enroll dyan? I'm, pwede siguro ng ano, second course, di ba? Hindi naman masama mag-second course, kaya lang gagastos ka. May pe- <laughs> Alam nyo naman, kolehiyo, hindi lang mura ngayon ng kolehiyo eh. Parang IT yung isa, yes, toto yan, no? Uh, tapos sila Kong TV ang prof mo. Hindi ko nga, yun ang kailangan nating ano. So medyo binabasa ko pa lang. Ano ba yan? Lasal, hindi naman, ang bagal ng website nyo. Game Development Laboratory. Ay, nako, ang bagal ng website. Three new courses. Dito tayo sa CNN Philippines pala. Okay. So, De La Salle University. This is a new segment back in March 30, 2016. No? Kaya, sinasa- hindi ito bagong news, no? Pero, na- nate-trending lang kasi dahil esports is trending, no? So, La Salle and Ubisoft created three new courses. This is more on the development side. So, pag-aaralan, pag-abasahin natin sa dali, no? Uh, leading game industry partner, Ubisoft to further promote technology, research, okay. Uh, College of Computer is set to launch two new undergraduate courses. Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, major in game development. Uh, Bachelor of Science in Entertainment and Media Computing. And then, ano yung isa? Dalawa lang sinabi. Dalawa lang. Okay, dalawa lang. So, meron na rin si, Ubis- si Ubisoft or Lasal. Lasal, uh, wala nga lang tayong pera pang Lasal, no? 
Um, but meron na silang game development, no? So this is this is not technically new. Although admittedly, etong usapang esports is very trigger, nakaka-trigger sa mga mainstream media ito, nakaka-trigger sa sa Facebook communities natin, nakaka-trigger sa a lot of our gaming communities because this is particularly ang ang the thing nito is they think it's actually just playing games. But in actual fact, none of these courses, none of the information in these courses is about becoming an esports athlete or esports player. Yun ang problema ng tao because hindi nila masyado nilang binabasa, hindi nilang pinag-aaralan ko ano yun. They're just having a sort of knee-jerk reaction na parang, oh, esports? Esports ano? Ano yun? Gaming? They, they they don't they don't think about yung sa, sa esports marami talagang trabaho sa esports like what if ikaw yung taga Asus or taga Acer na nagde-develop ng mga events nyo what if magtrabaho ka sa level up games hindi ko na alam may, may level up games pa ba <laughs> what if magtrabaho ka sa mga ganong kompanya where uh am kumikita kayo sa ano i mean ESGS is a big event every year ESGS is yung electronic gaming and Oh my god, ESG e electronic sports and and <laughs> Um FEU Tech has game dev then. There you go, Mike Roger. Thank you for that info. Uh sabi ni Reno Lizado parang good start maging part ng management ng isang pro team. Yes. They work your way from there para maging legit player. But yes, you can also become that. And also, hindi naman sinasabi, ito kasi yung Maraming problema sa marami at sa ating Pilipino din eh. Yung pinag-aralan mo sa college, you don't necessarily have to be that when you graduate, no? A lot of people, Pilipinas, ibang bansa, especially sa ibang bansa, no? Yung pinag-aralan natin, hindi yun yung ating trinatrabaho. <laughs> ako, nag ako ng IT, Management in Information System. So, Partly, partly computer programming ang pinag ko. Partly management. So, may, may management courses ako. May accounting courses din ako. Ay, classes din ako. Hindi yung todo-todong todong accounting, no? Accounting one, uh, 11 or whatnot. Hanggang accounting 4 ata ako. So, sa Pilipinas, well, in, in most of the world, the, the thing you pick, take up in college is not necessarily the thing you actually become as a uh, in a, as a job pero marami kang napipick up na skills kasi the pick up na uh, communication with your team teammates uh, sa school ano um marami pa rin diyan na uh, yung first 2 years mo marami pa rin diyan english courses taga filipino course di ba marami kang nagnonoli may tanghi eh, pa yung iba diyan nag, uh, nag <laughs> yung ibang college tuturo ka pa paano mag microsoft word so first year in college, if you don't, maniwala kayo at hindi. Hindi ko alam kung nag, tinuruan kayo. Ng, anong, anong inaral nyo first year in college? Economics, management, algebra siguro. Uh, o kaya ano, uh, finance siguro. Baka nag-finance kayo. Finance 101. Uh, most likely, nag-English, uh, may, English core, may English class kayo. Uh, malamang English composition yan sa simula. First year is English compositions, di ba? Then meron din kayong Filipino class. Hindi ko alam kung Filipino composition yan or Filipino Filipino literature, Phil Lit or, or taga, whatever. So, in, marami, yung, in, in actual fact, in most colleges, they broaden your scope in the first two years. You pick up a lot of information in literature, in composition, in team building, in communication, yan, and then finance, and ano, meron kang additional sa mga ibang bagay. So, nabobroaden yung alam mo sa mundo. Makakapag, dun sa first two years mo sa college, so totoo lang, pwede ka lang magmas, uh, may natuturo na sa'yo, maliit na, konti lang, pero stepping yung parang un undergrad na, ano yan, ng para bagang pre-med, parang pre-management or pre-accounting, pre uh, English literature studies kanon So sa thing in 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 true fact this is mostly just itong eh, pag binasa natin esports management track no Ang tinuturo sa kanya daw is team manager owner 
So, ang trabaho ng team manager sa eSports. So, nagmamanage ka ng players mo, ng organization mo, ng sponsors nyo, and ganun. Marketing PR executive, that's still just a marketing job. Para ka nag-aral ng marketing, diretso. You can also, typically, yung marketing PR executive ng eSports teams is nag-aral ng old school marketing. Community, social media manager, that's... Anong... Anong commu- ang social media manager? Uh, Bachelor of Science in Mascom? Hindi, hindi Mascom yun eh. But these, these, these uh, jobs are all related to current existing uh, curriculums already. No? Ang ano lang, they're trying to make one that is more focused on esports. No, esports agent. That's just a sports agent na para sa computer games. Sales partnerships manager. That's just a salesman job except for esports, no? For teams, for sponsorships. Community social media manager. That's pretty much same ng iba din. Event manager. That's also event planning. Production broadcasting. That's sometimes uh, related to um cinema uh, uh, antag dito. Video production yun eh. Hindi ko alam kung anong tawag sa video production sa ano. Um, marketing manager, market researcher, that's all just traditional jobs. Except, dito sa kurso na to, ang gagawin nila is esports focused or focused on pro, uh, supporting the esports track. No? So, imbis na uh, sales na nagbebenta ka ng insurance or nagbebenta ka ng type pra, anon pa mong binibenta ka yun? Na, kung ano-anong binibe- kotse Sabihin natin, sale, nag-aral ka ng salesman Typically, magbebenta ka ng kotse But instead of magbebenta ka ng kotse In this track, they're teaching you about yung mga Typical conditions in a esports organization Buying, selling, uh, mga ano Or trying to get sponsors for your, ano, your team Anyway, game design, very traditional Almost none, no need explaining Everything here except the game tester pinag-aaralan na sa regular developer no especially game design developer na meron din sa Lasal or in other countries so sabi nga ni Rainer and uh, ni Mark Roger may FEU has game dev din game design game testing video game designer software developer animation the engineer lead game programmer developer associate game quality assurance blah blah blah, 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 blah. ang mag- ang difference lang nito ang difference lang nito versus your traditional programming uh, course is most likely yung professor mo hindi kayo pinagpo-program ng accounting ng ano na kasi yung sa amin eh yung mga pra, mga <laughs> project namin sa sa programming courses ko is gagawa ka ng uh, computerized programming system yan tapos may ginawa din akong program na educational uh, uh, game para sa Miriam Elementary ay Miriam Kindergarten School no Kinder Elementary Basta mga bata like like 7 years old na bata so gumawa kami ng Windows program noon eh tapos kiklikan mo A A is for Apple tapos ni-record namin yung boses ng teacher nila para malinaw yung pagka-record ng boses A Apple ganun siya malinaw yung boses ng yung teacher So imbis na yun yung dine-develop nyo your uh, kasi sa in a traditional computer programming course, marami yan, may, minsan yung pupunta kayo sa isang business sa sabihin niyo, okay, ano yung problem ng business niyo? What can we do to sort of create a thesis na makakatulong sa inyong business problem with a computer program system. Dito naman, instead of that, most likely yung professor mo, sige nga, gawa kayo ng game. <laughs> yung tuturo sa inyo, which is good. But the, this exists. There's nothing particularly super special about this and Kasi ang problem ng tao sa Pilipinas, the reaction to dito is sobrang like they don't take it seriously. Yun na lang. They don't take it seriously. That's the problem with most people is they think it's just a joke. They think this kind of thing is just a joke. Um, but in truth, it is kind of a real thing now. And it's not it's not even a course to to become a better esports player, no? But most likely, if you're in this environment, marami kang malalaman and you become a better player as well. Because na-expose ka dun sa paligid ng esports. 
the better exposure you have with esports, the better player you become as well. Anyway, ang point ko dito, wa, uh, ang unang point ko is, ayo hindi ko na, hindi ako natatawa dun sa sobrang reaction na hindi sineseryoso ng tao yung course na esports career. Pangalawa, I think this is an okay advancement naman. And, and yun nga, hindi nga si Lyceum ang nauna sa ganito. May game design, game development na sa ibang bansa. Sa ibang bansa and dito sa, sa Pilipinas, meron na rin. Ang, ang kakaiba lang talaga yung esports management track. Which is basically just a management job with some sales, with some whatever, yun na nga, uh, na medyo uh, mas, mas nakafocus sa esports side, sa gaming side. Now, ang gusto ko sana basahin. So, may mga, yun, yun, yun ang reaction ko. Uh, I just don't like the reactions ng mga tao. Yung mga, yung mga, they don't take it seriously. Uh, that's that's my issue with most people. They just don't take it seriously. They think it's a joke. Um, but, so may mga tao naman na seryosa sa kanya. So, ang gusto kong malaman is ano ang pinagsasasabi nila dito. Is it just fluff marketing? This is a golden opportunity to show our society that gaming is not a waste of time and giving you a heads up that this course is not going to be easy. It's going to be it's not going to be just about fun and games. <laughs> just go. Kailangan talaga nilang sabihin eh, no? Uh, I also want to take this time to personally ask the future and role is to take every subject seriously and learn whatever they learn. Tama. I guess yun yung ano yung ang ang problema nitong course na to is to be they need to they need to do something to be taken seriously. I think you know, magiging problem is just may stigma. Eh. There's a bad stigma about gaming sa ating educational system, and I hate the fact that it, it there's there. Pero ako nagaral ako ng programming, nagaral ako ng computer para maglaro ng games, saka para magdevelop ng games noon eh. Nung bata ako gusto ko gumawa ng games. So there are people who want to do this, no? Um, and hindi naman yun lag if you're learning esports management course kanyan hindi naman yun yung typically hindi naman yun yung aabutan mong trabaho unless talagang wala kang pinipiling trabaho except yun no our, our college degrees rarely if ever affect our jobs kung ang, ang choice of jobs at most at best it's very tangential no yung sometimes you you would be in a an accounting course and then magiging ano ka uh, uh, manager ka ng uh, business let's say hindi ka accountant hindi ka CPA pero manager ka ng business you learn some management skills dun sa pagsisipa mo but yung pagsisipa mo konti lang nagagamit mo as a manager kasi merong, as a manager, merong ka accountant under you. But, yung nalalaman mo as a CPA is also helping your communication with your uh, certified public accountant pag nagkita na kayo. So, generally, in our industry, in the Philippines, in the rest of the world, ang pinag-aralan natin is only dumidikit lang by a small degree sa trabaho natin. There's very, very rare occurrences na Ito yung inaral mo, ito yung trabaho mo. Siguro yung doktor na lang, tsaka ano, tsaka abogado. May, kilala, may mga kilala ko na nag-aral ng abogado, nagbebenta ng ano, nagbebenta ng lupa. Yun yung trabaho niya ngayon. Nag-aral ng abogado, nagbebenta ng properties. Ang layo, di ba? But, yun yung ano doon. In that example, ang pinag niya is, uh, uh, batas, no? Ang batas. Nagbebenta siya ngayon ng lupa, ng uh, real estate. Yung dikit lang nun is yung legal in, yung legal uh, battle kung, kung legal ba magbenta ng ganito, magka, ano yung legal uh, um, taxes na kailangan bayaran pag nagbenta ka, no? So, di, di, wag natin sanang bigyan ng bad time or bigyan ng pagtawanan wag seryosohin yung mga gusto mag-aral ng esports management ngayon the question is maganda ba ang esports management na ginagawa nitong brand na to kasi hindi ko sila kilala personally wala akong alam dito kailangan nilang gawin is to create a sort of uh, uh, an informational 
or like a informational video or informational na ano. Uh, two, let us know how professional these people are. We need to know how good these people are, how uh, how or how veteran they are in the industry to take them seriously. Kasi kung yung professor mo nga si Kong TV lang, pucha, ano, uh, nakita nyo ba yung videos ni Kong TV? Professor ba yun? Uh, yun ang tanong, no? Uh-uh. Parang ang stigma kasi ng esports is pro player. Yun na nga eh. Uh, pag sinabi kasi ng esports, they think people playing, playing games eh. Um, e- esports and gaming summit. Thank you, Rain- Rainer. <laughs> I hope they also make an associate esports course for those na hindi afford mag entire four year. Actually, I really wish they made this a uh, an elective or hindi naman elective. Ano yon yung yeah associate course or yung two year course? I I really wish they just make a two year course na may certificate and everything, no? Um, I think kung ako yon, kasi kung two year course madaling pasukin ng already working professionals, for example, di ba? Um, if you're already nag-graduate ka ng management, nag-graduate ka ng sales or something, and then gusto mo pumasok sa esports, or nasa esports ka na, or maybe gusto mo mag-apply sa ASUS or mag-apply sa ano, kumuha ka ng ganitong sort of uh, two-year course to improve your skills and become more uh, well-versed sa esports uh, industry. And baka mas maganda yung opportunities, opportunities mo because of that, no? <clears throat> kung e-sport kailangan pro na Patrick Aboros says late na naman ako hindi naman <laughs> anyway yun na basa 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 ta ng konti gusto ko malaman ko sino nagtuturo um, we will be passing the curriculum uh, on um, to Ched this March we might have a full course available by 2020 the 2020 that's this year um, the gaming agency's chief executive officer, Trike Gutierrez, said that the new degree for true track game development. Okay. Um, kailangan nila ng curriculum vitae. Kailangan gusto ko makita yung yung website ng course. And here are our professors. Na, ganyan. Uh, here's a uh, blank. He's been the esports industry as a manager for blank years, and has managed X amount of teams. And has organized these events. Ginyan. Tapos pangalawa. Gusto ko makita yon. Kung, kung nakita ko yon, and na, nakita ko na medyo trustworthy naman yung mga professors and yung mga nagtuturo, then I would like the the course, no? Pero kung si Kong TV yon, di on. Kung si Kong TV yung nagturo, si Kong TV, mag, ma, mag-aaral ako under Kong TV, kung ang course niya is how to become an online gaming influencer. Yan. Yan. Or si ako si Doge. Pero. Alam mo yung, yung yung si ako si Doge and then si si Kong TV. They need to have an an educational background as well. Kasi kung wala kang educational background, hindi hindi mo marun, hindi hindi ka marunong mag-impart ng knowledge even though nasa utak mo yung knowledge na yon, hindi mo mai kasi maraming intangible sa alam mo na hindi mo ma-communicate. That's why a lot of uh, mga professors needs to have good experience teaching because teaching is a skill in itself. And I don't think Kong TV or Ako si Doge has the skill set of teaching. They have the skill set of entertaining you sa kanilang con- content. But they don't have the skill set of teaching. You need to have a skill set of teaching. no? In a classroom environment where Kailangan ganito ang ginawa ko as an influencer, ganito ginawa ko para magkaroon ng YouTube subscribers, blah, blah, blah. And then, explain niya kung bakit nangyayari yun and ba- ano yung theory behind it, ano yung theory ng marketing niya, theory ng ano, right? Paano siya nagkaroon ng sponsor, paano siya nagkaroon. If he can, if he can, if they can make a good course that will teach people to, to, to learn yung kanilang process, then good. Pero yun na nga, they need to have an educational background or at least know how to explain kanilang success story and how to uh, achieve that success story them, uh, yourself if they're gonna be the teacher. Pero yun na nga, medyo, medyo duda ko that they will be credible enough to be teaching courses like that. <clears throat> anyway, ano bang nakita ko dito? So, ito yung binasa ko kanina. Um, meron pa silang ano yun. Let's look at some... Hindi, hindi si Trike yung... Gusto ko si Tier 1 yung, yung post eh. 
Okay. <clears throat> sana talaga associate's degree talaga. Yeah, true. True. I mean, sana nga. Sana nga. Um, I don't know why they went with a four-year course talaga. Siguro ang gagawin, kung ako personally, kung ako yung bata, let's say, na 18 years old ako, kakagraduate ko pa lang. 17 years old, kakagraduate. Um, kukumbinsin ko yung nanay ko or tatay ko na magdo-dual, uh, do double major ako. Double major, maghanap ka ng management course, something like that, management course, and then pagsamahin mo with the esports management course. Kasi konti lang idadagdag mo dun sa esports management, double major ka na eh. Diba? Most likely, siguro, 60% ng classes ng management course is pasok sa esports management course. So, dadagdag ka na lang ng extra 40, let's say, siguro third and fourth year mo, madadagdag ka ng six subjects each year. So each sem. Siguro. Feeling ko lang. Nanguhula lang ako. But, madaling mag-double major pag gaganon. Kasi very malaki yung, malaki yung overlap ng management and esports management course. <clears throat> dami enroll dyan pag si Elodia Professor. Okay. So, yun ang ano dito. It was, it was started by Tier 1 Entertainment. Now, Tier 1 Entertainment is not exactly an education uh, based uh, ano, group or company. No? It's a talent management course. No? It's, a ta it's a talent management company. Tier 1, ma Tier 1 Entertainment is a talent management company of uh Esports entertainers or esports athletes or particularly katulad ni Aloja, which is basically a uh, hindi man entertainer but more like gaming streamer talent you know no um and nagsu scroll nga ako eh so matagal matagal na akong nawalan ng parang interest sa ganda ni Aloja but this one in particular is pretty nice <laughs> I thought that was nice no um. If it were if it were higher quality photo it'd be nicer kasi medyo it's low res eh. I can see the pixels man right yeah, I wish parang nung bumili ako ng uh, FHM ni Aloja na mas 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 marami pa siyang damit kaysa sa mga cosplay. <laughs> Tsaka alit uh, uh, ano ba yun? Okay so sa bu bumili ako ng uh, ng official digital version ng FHM ni Alodia. Okay? Digital version. Okay? So, dinownload ko yung digital version. Official to, ah. It was like 80 megs. 80 megs. And then, napaka low res nung, ano, nung photos. Each page is like probably 2 megapixels. Each page! I isang buong pahina ng magazine is 2 megapixels. Eh, ang liliit na mga photos ni Alodja dun sa mag... Dun sa ano... Just like, pag zinom in mo, sobrang bloke na yung mukha ni Alodja. Grabe, sabi ko, sayang pera ko dun ha. <laughs> Kwento na naman ako. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, Alodja's still a nice-looking woman, no? Lady. Um, especially in this photo. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, eh, eh, yun ang isa sa mga medyo weird is because... The esports course is coming from a entertainment and gaming or uh, talent management group, talent management, talent management company, and may mga detractor si Tier One. So, hindi it's Tier One is slightly controversial in the industry so far. Ako wala akong problema because wala akong hindi ako nakikipagguluhan sa sa mga game streamers, game streamers na yan. But um, may drama si Tier One, may parang nagsasabi na uh, uh, ang tag dito, uh, ano yun, favoritism, or medyo they're making fun of their, their concept, ganyan. Uh, ako natatawa sa, sa Tier 1 dati kasi nagdala sila ng sports car sa gitna ng ESGS. So parang, ay, ESGS ba yun or ano? Uh, APAC, uh, AP, ano? AC, ACCPC ba yun? <laughs> Asia Pacific something something ko but anyway natatawa lang ako kasi naghahanap sila ng bagong talent sa streaming talent tapos yung karate lang nila gusto mo ba maging streamer which makes sense pero I don't know kung bakit may sports car sa gitna ng, <laughs> ng convention alang kinalaman sa ano yun sa streaming yun. anyway 
AJ Bonita, hey AJ, what's up? Example kom sa bro. Ay nag- nakikinig si Kuya AJ. Uh, si Kuya AJ is a uh, isa sa mga barkada ko. He's a great entertainer. Um napaghalata fan siya dati. <laughs> Hindi ako. Ano, med- medyo fan ako pero sabi ko nung kung kung mag-FHM siya, bibiling ko. Mas marami pa siyang damit na sinuot sa FHM na, na mga pictures niya kesa pag pumunta ka sa mga cos- pag nakita mo yung mga cosplay niya. Sa cosplay niya sobrang konti na lang ng damit niya. Pero sa FHM dumami yung damit niya kasi naka naka pang pang lola yung mga damit niya, meron pang <laughs> Weird, bakit ka bumili ng FHM na ganoon? Uh, anyway, weird. Um tsaka yung low quality nung ano nung wag kang bumili ng digital na FHM. I- alam ko Marami, marami na mimirata eh. But ako, binili ko talaga yon With, with ano, I think 250 to 150, ganun. Um, pwede naman yung esports management as a specialization under BSIT. There you go, John Shaw. Thank you, thank you. Ah, uh, yeah, that's good. So, talagang, ito lang talaga, it's just become so viral because people are just having knee-jerk reactions dun sa course na esports management. And uh, sa totoo lang, all of these Skills are taught in other courses and all of these skills are just, you know, ginawa lang nila specialized. It's just, naging viral lang talaga siya. Yun lang talaga. Wala kang masasabing iba except naging viral siya because there's a lot of people reacting to it and making fun of it or or not taking it seriously. But all of these are serious skills that you will you will use in any industry. If you're a team, if you learn how to become a team manager, you will be a team manager for any industry Project manager in any industry, ganyan. So, all of these skills are still useful in any industry. Don't take it lightly. No, take it seriously. These are all skills. And the industry, there's all an esports industry. Kahit na kung matanda kayo masyado, hindi nyo alam na may man, hindi kayo naniniwala may esports industry ngayon. Wag nyong sabihan sa bata na hindi nyo sineseryoso yung kanyang ano. Uh, and hopefully, sa may, kung saan man merong ganito, for example, ito, Lyceum ito. Yung mga nag-aaral ng ibang kurso, sana wag maliitin yung nag-aaral nitong kurso na ito. Sana wag nilang maliitin. Um, mm, marami nag specialization pag IT. Uh, marami nang special. Okay. Um, pag naglaro ako ng MLD, magaling mga kakapi. <laughs> Tapos eSports course pa. Um, magtataka ako sa streaming or kay Tier 1 Paano kaya sila kumikita? Um, I think si Tier 1 is sponsorships no? uh, So I think, I think lang ha Hindi ko pinag yung kanilang ano But ang typical with these esports talent uh, management uh, brands is They sign up talents okay they sign up alodia they sign up ano they get talents so they have popular instagram or gamer talents and then um if they could also they what what tier one would usually do is negotiate with brands the so that these talents become their ambassadors or uh kung kung uh parang let's say esports host yan or si Aloja for sure for example let's say you have an event no and you want to hold an event and then want to have Aloja as a host who do you call since tier 1 is her manager quote unquote you have to call tier 1 and, and negotiate a terms and cost or yung babayad mo to have Aloja appear in your event as a host or whatever kung ano yung gusto mong appear si Aloja so it's a manage, it's basically a hente ng talento so Kung Hollywood yan, it's like your uh, talent manager or your casting manager sa Hollywood ng mga artista. Kung ikaw si, uh, sino ba? si Brad Pitt, meron kang ahente, your manager or your agent, siya yung nag-negotiate ng deals mo. Kung anong mga uh, pinopromote mong, uh, pinopromote mo na kotse, pinopromote mo na pagkain ganun. So lahat sila dadaan sa ahente mo kasi sila yung sila yung tumatawag to create these deals. Sila din yung nag-negotiate for you. Marami silang ginagawa for you. Para ikaw you just become the ta- you just are the talent. So this a tier 1 manage a tier 1 entertainment is basically just that in a talents management an event man or well, some I don't know events management. 
is a is a tier is a um an uh, a talent management company but instead of talents in terms of marunong sila mag-acting para sa Hollywood movies it's a talent management of esports or gaming related talents no so they could be a presenter a host a lodia something like that they could be a gamer they could be a, an esports athlete kasi esports athlete are also talents and the brand might want to contact this esports athlete to promote their products no so okay magiging sponsor siya nung nung esports talent na yon or kung streamer sila these brands might want to contact that streamer to add ads uh, to add advertisement nung brand dun sa stream nung streamer diba that usually happens so if i'm not mistaken this is one of the first it's see tier 1 is one of the first organized sa pilipinas that is basically yon uh, um a talent management a talent agent for gaming related stuff gaming related talents which is okay but yun na nga they're embroiled in controversy a lot of time so <laughs> Hindi na ako magko-comment doon. I'm not in the... Honestly, ma magulo at madugo at madrama sa industriya ng st gaming streaming sa Pilipinas. no Sumali kayo sa mga streaming, game streaming groups na seryoso. Yung seryosohan, yung gusto talagang 20, 20, ano, 7 days a week na nagsistream. Maraming bangayan. Maraming uh, club mentality. Maraming... Bakit siya ang dami? Maraming, ano, tapos may mga galit sa mga babae na, na mal, konti yung damit, yung mga nauso yung sando gaming term, di ba? Hashtag sando gaming. There's so, sobrang daming bangayan sa sa Philippine uh, uh, online streaming communities. Okay? Uh, so, kasama si Tier 1 Entertainment doon sa bangayan. I have to, yun yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. Kasama si Tier 1 Entertainment sa bangayan. So, medyo hindi sila yung parang shining beacon of godliness na inisip nyo na parang not, they, they do no wrong. Marami pa rin sa bangayan sila. But, uh, I, ako wala akong alam sa bangayan. Uh, wala akong, I have nothing against Tier 1 Entertainment personally. But, ang alam ko lang, hindi sila ganong kalinis. Um, so, napahaba itong topic na to. Ha. But, uh, yeah, yun yung aking... Uh, Ayoko nang tapos na ayoko na masyado mag-discuss. <laughs> I think masyado na tayong maraming pinag-usapan din sa course but uh, masyado na tayong malayo sa pinag-uusapan tungkol sa esports course but uh, uh, hopefully medyo na gets yung ibig sabihin ko dito sa pag-usapan natin. Um, by the way, may Android 11 beta na. O nga eh, wala ka lang ako Android 1 or Android something na pwede kong gamitin. I still wala, wala akong ano eh. Wala akong Nokia or wala akong OnePlus na pwedeng sa tester ng Android 11. Okay na naman ako sa Android 10. Medyo tanggap ko na na mabagal talaga yung updates ko. Um, honestly speaking, if maging associate degree ang esports, I'm enrolling ASAP kahit sa LPU Manila pa yan. I hope so. Uh, ano talaga? I think siguro maybe... Eh, Tingnan natin next year. Baka nagkaroon ulit ng bago. No? <laughs> Uh, pero let's see what the main content ng curriculum ng course yan. Yeah, I, I thought they had a post kung sino yung magiging magtuturo. I don't know kung sino, saan ko nabasa yung information kung sino magtuturo. But I, I think that's good enough information right now. Kasi I think hindi pa naman fully realized yung usapan about this esports course. Kasi ipipresent pa lang sa CHED this March ba <clears throat> may commission sila. Yeah, tama si Rainer. Uh, Sando Gaming kasalanan na biyang kayaw. <laughs> Hindi, I don't even know what the heck that is, no? Pero ano kasi yan eh? I think, yeah, si sabihin natin, I, I think I recognize this biyang kayaw, I think. Um, pero maraming babaeng ganyan. So, uso yan. O yan, si Anne Mateo din. Uh, maraming quote-unquote Sando Girls because a lot of Filipino female streamers Especially yung may associated with brands, yan, si Anne Mateo, for example, um, they stream talaga naka-sando. And it's almost kasama sa uniform nila yan. Eh. <laughs> Partly sa si uniform niya yan, sa brand, hindi, hindi ko sinasabing pag ma-attend siya ng event, uh, no, nag-ho siya, she's always wearing sando. But nobody hired Anne Mateo for her 
charming personality. Okay, may- maybe that's going too far. <laughs> Nobody hires them to cover up their 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 bodies, no? Um Ito <clears throat> medyo very very uh, uh, ang position ko sa using sexual attractiveness to uh, to to entice viewers wala akong reklamo doon um even though ako as a as an ugly old fat guy i i'm basically the the worst person to the wor- i'm the most disadvantaged when it comes to using uh uh the attractiveness of the streamer the sexual uh attractiveness or i know of the streamer to get more views because ako sa akin ay, ay ano eh medyo tanggap ko na the world is not fair okay you, the, the 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 day you think that attractiveness should not be used in a convert in a in a in an equation kung sino yung magiging ahead sa mundo tapos na ang usapan na yun. para sa akin tapos na yung usapan na yun. ako sa akin if attractiveness gets you through the door and gets you viewers that is the industry alam nyo pumunta lang kayo sa TV manood lang kayo ng TV may nakikita ba kayong sikat na hindi 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 mistisang babae sa TV na pinaparada wala you need to be attractive to be on entertainment ano uh, i know maraming may magrereklamo diyan pucha ah, si Alex masyadong sexist no um, but i'm not saying that i'm saying that you have to accept the fact that the world is not perfect. The, we a lot of major, let's let's call them mabababaw ang kanilang isipan. Ha? So when they see an attractive woman streaming, it sa it elevates the content for them. Even though in a perfect world, nothing should elevate the content except the content itself. Na walang kinalaman sa damit nung or sa ganda nung nagsistream or gumagawa ng content but that's not the truth the truth is tanggalin mo kahit walang streaming sa mundo in in sa sa industriya ng uh, naki, bakit may nakita ka na bang sales lady na pangit may nakita ka na bang newscaster sa TV na pangit as in pangit na pangit ha Kahit yung mga matatandang newscaster sa TV, minsan nag-aayos pa rin sila, nagme-makeup pa rin sila para maganda yung dating nila. May nakita ka na bang... Uh, so, the world is governed... It, it, there is an advantage to being attractive and ginagamit lang ng tao sa streaming. no? And to me, fair, there is just not... There, don't think that everybody will play fair in such a way na lahat kayo pangit or lahat kayo same level of attractiveness. No. People will always use at their advantage or kung, kung physical looks yan, they'll, they'll use it. No, So, just let bygones be bygones. Let people entertain in the way that they want to entertain. Now, uh, do you, ang tanong dyan, do you draw the line somewhere? Gano kahubad kailangan yung babae para sabihin mo masyado ng hubad? yon ang tanong because merong hindi clear cut line yan hindi clear cut na eto bawal na yan yan ganun so yun ngayon yung pinaglalabanan sa church lagi laging ah, masyadong hubad yung babae masyadong maraming sexual things sa ginagawa yung babae and then sabi si Twitch naman parang eh hindi naman siguro masyado um it's gonna be a constant it's gonna be a perpetual discussion kung ano yung wholesome pa rin, pero attractive yung babae or masyado ng sexualized. And personally, actually, actually wala akong pakialam kung gawin nilang sexualized yung kanilang stream. It is what it is, no? Um, it's hard to gatekeep stuff like that, eh. Uh, di, hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin streaming is only for gaming. 
Marami, marami. It's such a gray area. It's such a gray area. And the fact of the matter is, in the current situation that you cannot change overnight, the fact of the matter is, if you're attractive, you will attract more viewers to your stream. Now, tanggapin mo, please, if you, hindi, ka, hindi ka pasok dun sa attractiveness na yun, tanggapin mo yung shortcomings mo, tanggapin mo yung disadvantages mo, and make sure you are better because of that. I know, I know most likely yung mga kausap ko dito hindi naman streamers, pero masyadong nakakrab mentality yung Pilipinong streaming community pag nakita nila yung katulad nun yung Sando Girl eh. Because they think na disadvantage sila because lalaki sila, no, hindi sila magandang babae, kaya walang nanonood sa stream nila. Bitch, everybody in the world has that disadvantage as long as they're not an attractive woman. Don't complain about that. You need to beat that disadvantage. Otherwise, wala ka talagang pag-asa. If you think na yung, kasi hindi magbabago yung mundo para sa you need to change for the world. The world won't change for you. Yun ang sinasabi ko lang. Eh, sabi na tayong philosophical. <laughs> Sex sales kasi. Exactly. No? Um... Uh, cleverage, more viewers down. I mean, ako, I, I'm not, I'm no, I'm no um, uh, stranger to randomly checking kung maganda yung streamer. Pero hindi ako naman masyadong tumatagal kasi hindi ko gusto yung content. But nakita ko, oh, maganda yung babae. And then that's it. For example, si Poki Mane. Poki, Poki, paano i-pronounce yung pangalan niya? Nagaganda na ako kay Poki. Kaya lang, ko, ko, ang pangit ng content niya. Sobrang fake ng personality ni Poki eh. Pokemon, 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 something, paano yung pronounce her? Pokemon eh. Pokemon, ata yung actual pronounce her. Anyway, uh, hindi ko gusto yung, yung personality niya. <laughs> Pero maganda siyang babae, no? Um, natatawa ako sa isang streamer na minak yung Sando Gaming. Lalaki siya sa may glasses and cap, tapos nag-Sando siya and may good yung dibdib niya. I mean, meron ganun, no? Nakakatawa din yun. It's, it's sort of mocking, kaya lang... Um, I, gusto ko yung mga... Uh, Streamers that mock that uh, scene, pero hindi bitter. Kasi pag bitter ka, talo ka na. Viewers ni An Mateo, Tommy Tomato, what's up? Uh, viewers ni An Mateo, 3,000 pag nagsiset up ng stream. Tapos pag naglalaro na sila, nagiging 300 viewers. <laughs> I, I think kasi malaki yung, yung camera niya pag nagsiset up ng stream and then lumiliit ata pag nagigame. <laughs> Pokimane. Thank you, Rainer. Alright, so, um, masyado tayong tumagal sa topic na yun. Let's talk about, uh, ano yung last topic natin? Uh, tapos na tayo dyan. College, esports, eh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, huh, uh, huh. ROG phone. ROG phone. Nasa na ang ROG phone? Ito. ROG phone. Close na natin to. All right. So, ito medyo slightly interesting news and slightly weird news, gaming related, smartphone related. Ah, pasok sa ating mga interests. Mga VTubers na lang pinapanood ko. Nako, hindi ko mabasa yung pangalan mo, Hapon eh. Nino ini. <laughs> Gamitan natin ng ano. Sino ba to? Hindi pa ako marunong magbasa ng Hapon. Uh, but desu oshiri ano yung oshiri Oh, what? It's the ass. <laughs> okay. Mga VTubers. Si VTubers, mga ano yan? Si, uh... Alam, wala akong... Uh, ang alam ko VTuber, yung ano, si... Hindi ko alam yung pangalan. Hindi ko tinatandaan. Si, um... Uh... Holy heck, anong, ano niya? Anong kinakanta niya? Um... Scatman. 
Yan, I'm Scatman. Anong pangalan nung VTuber na to? I'm Scatman. Asan yung part 2 niya ito? Low quality pa nga yung video niya eh. 480p. Si ano to? Si... Hindi ko nga... Anong pangalan nito? Kailangan translate na naman natin yung pangalan niya. Copy. Google Translate. Fubuki! There you go. Fubuki. Ch channel Fubuki on white. I don't know what that means, but that's what it says. Fubuki. Uh, marunong ako medyo conversational Japanese pero hindi pa ako marunong magbasa pangit pa ako pan, hindi pa ako nag-aaral pa lang ako ng characters The Butt sabi ni Lionel Shoko tama ka uh, meron akong asa na ba yun? Fubuki <laughs> um, teka buksan ko itong pop out chat mas, ma mas, ma mas malinaw ito eh La bakit nasa labas ng aking screen Sorry naman. Yon. Tibidibidi paparapo. Papayapo. Tibidibidi papayapo. Ah, uh, this is why nag-unfollow na ako kay Ann Mateo. I'm cringing to see to see her have more followers and views sa mga true girl gamers. Well, ako, ako naman di, hindi lang talaga na entertain sa kanya. But, you know, to to each his own talaga. Kung meron talaga siyang followers, wag naman nating awayin, no? Uh, well, speaking of phones, I really need to buy a new one Naging slow na talaga Lenovo A7000 ko <laughs> may, may isang nga tayong salang topic na Babalik si Lenovo sa Pilipinas eh Maglalunch sila ng telepono Pero hindi pa official-official So, hindi ko muna tinapik no? <laughs> Oh, medical sa mamo Kamusta yung mamo? She... So, I might settle for chair mobile Flare S8 um, Ano ba to? Ask me about Mga phones ko for sale, Rainer, sa BTS Community Group Chat. Baka meron ako, ano. Unless, kung gusto mo na second hand lang, no? Kung hindi second hand ng interest mo, uh, mahirap, mahirap tayo mag-usap. <laughs> Yun lang. Um, may mga pwede ako ibenta ang second hand. Nag Nagpa-plano pa lang. Hindi pa ako nagpa-plan. Nag-arrange -nag -nag mga gamit. But, if you need something, I might have something for you if you want. Um, Alright, so let's talk about the ROG Phone 2 Strix Edition This sort of came out of nowhere um, Walang email si Asus sa akin, for example Walang balibalita, walang teaser Sino, may, may nakita ba kayo nagtiti si Asus na There's a new coming ROG something? They never told us about the affordable Asus ROG Phone 2 Strix Edition Until... Basically, lumitaw si Vilman and nagbigay ng price point, no? Uh, so, today, uh, well, 13 hours ago, according to this post, the ROG Phone 2 has been announced. The ROG Phone 2 Strix Edition. I think inimbento na lang nila yung branding na yun, eh. Kasi there's, there's, if you haven't been paying attention, the most popular variants of the ROG Phone have been a standard edition, and the ano yun, ultimate edition ata ang pangalan niya. Um, <clears throat> let's see. It says here yung price point. Ito wala pa sila nung Strix dito eh. So if you look over here, it says ROG Phone standard, ROG Phone 2 standard is 50,000 Philippine pesos, 49995 with 12 gigs of storage, uh, 12 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of uh, ROM, no? Very extravagant, 50,000 pesos, that's the same price. Basically, the same price ng S10 Plus ko. Uh, alam nyo naman siguro yung specs, it's powered by 855 Plus, maraming magandang specs. Anyway, yung Ultimate Edition is 60,000 pesos, 59,995. Um, nilagyan pa nila ng date na November 2019. 12 gigs, 1 terabyte. So, I don't think there's anything different between the two and the Ultimate except for the specs. No, I think may extra accessories din si Ultimate. If you if you see here, wala silang they don't the 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 phones don't have any differences except for the specs or the storage. Now they've just announced the ROG Phone 2 uh, Strix Edition, and there's no nahanap ko wala ko na Strix branding. Eh. So literally, this is basically just the same phone binabay yung storage. And curiously enough, if you're not if you haven't been following, 
the Strix Edition, uh, if you haven't been following the RG Phone 2, this is more than likely yung Tencent Edition with an official metal back na instead of the plastic back ng Tencent Edition. Now, why, bakit ko nasabi yun? Because, first of all, ito, ito yung reklamo ko sa ROG Phone 2 actually. Naglabas sila ng Tencent Edition sa China. Tapos, naglabas sila ng this exact variant with 8 gigs of RAM and ano to, 128 gigs, o oh yan, 8 gigs and 128 sa storage in India about a week or so before nag-announce ng ROG Phone 2 sa Pilipinas and guess what? Nag-announce sila sa India ng 30,000 peso variant sa Pilipinas hindi sila nag-announce ng 30,000 peso variant the first ROG Phone na in-announce sila is 50,000 pesos 49,995 I don't know why there's a Chinese 10 cent version for 30,000 pesos. There's an Indian 10 cent version, a uh, non 10 cent version, Indian 8 gig 128 version for 30,000 pesos. Why would they not give us that same variant for the same 30,000, 35,000 peso price point? Dun ako nagtaka. Bakit tayo kailangan bumili ng 12 gig variant ng 512 storage? I thought that was crazy because I don't know. Hindi ko naman intindihan because alam nyo, I think Asus knows na third world country tayo. I think Asus knows that not everybody can afford a 50,000 peso phone. I think Asus also knows na a lot of the gaming people, yung mga tao na gustong bumili ng gaming phone, yung budget nasa 20 to 30,000 pesos, maybe even less. So, doon ako nagtaka kung bakit Ang ating major population, ang mass population natin, everybody was clamoring for the ROG Phone 1. Yung 2, hindi, medyo hindi na nila sila naging ganun ka-excited because they, the ROG Phone 1 was extremely overpriced nung nag-launch dito. They weren't releasing something of more affordable like this. But dito sa ROG Phone 2, why did they, they already have the 10 cent version? They already have the engine version? Why not launch this version? I don't know why. Parang, parang akala mo pagkayaman-yaman ng Pilipino And sometimes Minsan nga nagtataka ako da, Bakit ganun tayo Kasi may mga, may mga tao din na mapera sa Pilipinas eh. um, But yon So ROG Phone 10 cent edition uh, ROG Phone 2 was launched in the Philippines For 50,000 pesos um, Oh my god That was many months ago um, I think siguro August last year? Ah, keyboard? Bakit ko hindi gumagana? Hindi gumagana yung keyboard ko. Function 3. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Nani? Okay. Um, function tab? Function 3. Uh, function... Function tab. Function tree. Hmm. Iwa wire ko na lang siya eventually. But, uh. <coughs> sorry naman. Um. Kailan ni launch ang. Eh, hindi ko talaga. Hindi tuloy ako makapag-type. Kapitan. Kapit ko na ngayon. Ang ating keyboard. Para. Bigyan nyo lang ako ng. 10 cent seconds. <coughs> Iwa wire ko na lang siya. <laughs> na keyboard na keyboard ko kata ko ka keyboard. Uh, what's up ko yun arms? Same performance yeah, same performance. Okay, so anong ginawa ko? Enough ko no on. Okay, back to wired mode. There we go, wired mode na siya. Uh, ROG phone. Yan in announce sa Pilipinas. Uh, October 2019 And then yung price niya <laughs> Ginamita ko pa nitong surprised Pikachu face eh. <laughs> Heck, they launched the 8 gig 128 variant in India last week Ayan no, exactly that oh, Sinabi ko 28,000 pesos Why didn't we get that variant? We're as confused as you are So the price is 49,995 back in October So that's October, November, December, January, February 5 months Ngayon, naglabas sila ng Strix Edition. I don't know why it took so long to launch a Strix Edition 
or just the version nagimbento lang sila ng pangalan eh. they just call it the sticks edition eh. para lang may masabi sila na bakit din nila nilaunch yung 8GB 128 version I don't understand eh ngayon nung mahabol sila ngayon na meron na silang Strix Edition para may makabenta pa sila I don't ba, ano ba ex, marami ba silang model uh, ma, na, na sobrahan ba sila ng 50,000 peso variant kaya inuna nila yun para may bumili muna nun kasi kung sabihin natin pumunta ka sa tindahan sabi nung tindera ito po same specs mas maraming mas maraming RAM 50,000 ito po same specs pero konti yung mas bawasan ng RAM 8 gig pero 35,000 eh di yung 35,000 yung bibilin mo siguro Yun lang yung reason, yun lang yung possible reason eh or wala silang stocks nitong na, na inalat sa Pilipinas nitong mas more than 35,000. Even though alam nating bebenta ito kung nilan sila to ng October. Um ROG phone you think uh malamang yung announcement niyan. So wala ko nung announcement. It, kasi yung yung price announcement was after yung announcement. Uh, this was yung price reveal. And then, meron pang mga previous months na mga teaser-teaser lang. Anyway. So, uh, in case you're not familiar with this, uh, Asus E-Store. Punta na si Asus E-Store. Tingnan natin kung ano yung specs. Kasi pareho lang yung specs ito. This 120Hz display, 1080p, dual dual camera, um, with, the, with the cooling cooling thingy. Yan yung yung uh, hindi ko alam kung ano tawag nila diyan. Aero Active Cooler 2 and Aero Case yon. So, specs. Uh, nakita nyo 2340 by 1080 AMOLED 10-bit HDR display na 120 Hz Android Pie. Android Pie pa rin. 8 gigs of RAM, 6000 mAh battery with quick charge 4 and uh, power delivery charging. Snapdragon 855 Plus. So, it's basically, it's exactly the same phone with just lower RAM and storage, no? So, if you look here, and yung mukha niya, malaki siyang phone, sabi gali MKBHD, it's a chunky, chunky phone. 600 nits brightness, gaming, HDR, mobile, HDR, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 12 gigs RAM dito kasi yun nga yung standard mo version niya. Yung camera is 48 main. If, uh, may, wala siyang uwaya, sa ang alam ko eh. And then, second camera is, nasa yung second camera? Ito, 13 megapixel ultra wide. And then, front camera is 24 megapixels. And shoots 4K, blah, blah, blah. Dual, dual front facing speakers is good, by the way. Um, and then, di ko matanda kung may headphone jack siya. Mm, built-in speaker, air trigger. Oh yeah, may air trigger nga pala siya. So, meron siyang parang touch touch sensitive uh sides uh, sa so phone. So, if you want to use that as your your gun triggers, that's also useful, no. Ayun, may headphone jack, USB-C, 6000 mAh battery, which is good. Um uh yeah, so what comes in the box? Air active cooler, Type C to Type C cable, ejector pin, USB power power adapter, 30 watts. Good. That's good. 30 watts is good, no? Um, so yun yung uh, ROG Phone 2 Strix Edition for 35,000, 34.995, no? Um, which is not a bad price. It's a little late and a little pricier than the 10 cent variant, which is nag nagbababa na yung 10 cent variant like 26,000 something na ngayon. Uh, and the wala tayong Indian variant mostly mostly mga Tencent variant there's a lot of second hand Tencent variant in the marketplace as well if you want to look around um, the, the the timing of this is a little weird no? kasi if you're in the market for a gaming phone right now you might be in the camp of waiting a little bit more to get a newer Snapdragon 865 phone which is basically parating na in the next few months, like katulad nga ni K30 Pro. Reportedly, the K30 Pro, kasi if you're not, if you don't remember, the Redmi K30 or the basically what was rebranded as the Poco X2 was announced with a 120 hertz display, pero 730, uh, 730 Snapdragon 730 processor. But 
According to rumors, especially galing kay Kuya Rika, uh, na-delay lang ng konti because of coronavirus concerns, but the K30 Pro, the uh, Xiaomi K30 Pro, will pow will be powered by a Snapdragon 865. So, 120Hz display din yun, and it's a Xiaomi brand, so it's not that bad. And typically, mura, mas mura yung Xiaomi, for particular, if you're gonna compare it, uh, yung P30, uh, P30 Pro. <laughs> P20? P ano bang inisip ko? M Mi 90 Pro is a lot more cheaper as a as a flagship phone, no? Mi 90 Pro. Anyway, I digress, no? Um, is it still worth 35,000 pesos? Yun ang, yun ang tanong mo sa sarili mo. Is it still worth 35,000 pesos? It's five months later than it's, it's supposed... It should have launched five months earlier. For sure, that's half a year. And it's still priced a little bit higher than you expected at 35,000. I would have wanted this to be around to be exactly 29,995, pero medyo that's a little ano, a little bit uh, uh masyadong uh, um, optimistic para sa Asus. Alam niyo naman op si Asus is a uh, they air towards a little bit higher pricing these days than lower pricing. Hindi na sila. Tapos na yung mga panahon ng Asus Zenfone 2. <laughs> okay. Tapos na may mga panahon ng mga Asus Zenfone selfie. Tapos na yung panahon ng mga ganun, mga affordable Asus phones. They air towards the more expensive na ngayon. So, at 35000 nagiging borderline siya. Borderline if you want to buy it or not. I think, if they waited another month or so, it would have been too late. Nobody would buy this phone. Uh, but right now, it's still slightly decent. Sa timing, kasi may mga tao pa rin na sobrang gusto pa rin ng Asus brand phone or ROG brand phone. So, may pag-asa pa itong Strix Edition. And kung yung mga, yung siguro dalawang tao sa, mun sa Pilipinas na hindi pa rin bumibili ng Tencent Edition, bagay dito. It's been five months, over more than five months, na merong 10 cent edition sa Pilipinas. Is it not? Siguro nasa 7 months na tayong may 10 cent sa Pilipinas. So, you've been waiting 7 months trying not to buy the 50,000 peso ROG phone or the 30,000 peso ROG 10 cent version. So, yung mga nagantay ng 7 months. Here you go. Merong warranty. Hindi siya 10 cent edition. May Google Play Store. So, yun... Shush! Some music Shush! Oh, hindi siya... Okay, Google. Stop music. Ay, my God. <laughs> Bubunutin ko na lang siya. Kasi pag nagsalita ako ng keyword, trigger yung phones nyo. Na triggered, na triggered yung ano ko, yung Google Home Mini ko. Triggered. Anyway, ah, uh, gonna go na sir. Sabi ni Rainer Lizada, I'm starting to nod off dito. Malapit na tayo matapos. Yeah, so thank you, Rainer. Um, so yun ang ROG Phone 2, uh, Strix Edition. Um, I, it's kind of weird that uh, that Asus is doing this, but also they should have done this. I, I mean. It's also better that they've done it. Better late than never na lang. Better late than never. Better late than never. Mute my TV. Okay. Um, so there you go. That's the Asus ROG Strix. Uh, ROG Phone. Oh my God. Ang the name. Asus ROG Phone 2 Strix Edition. <laughs> so yun. Uh, if you want to get one, it's available now. It's a little late, but not bad. <laughs> better late than never. Alright, so I think that about does it for our topics for today. Ito yung mga stores pala if you're interested kung bumili kayo. Available, now available nation. Right? Check the list of person participating stores. Marikino, Longa po, Cebu, San Juan, Pasig, San, uh, San Fernando, ITEC, okay, SVGA, ano to? Uh, Quezon City, Legazpi, baka may hiwa. Um, Asus Concept Store, blah, 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 blah. So, if you're interested in buying one, there's your stores. Um, congratulations. You've waited seven months for this phone to happen. The 30,000 peso version of the Asus ROG Strix. 
ROG Phone 2 Strix Edition. Oh my God. Alright guys, so uh, maraming uh, tapos na ating topics. So, wala na ako masyadong ibang topics. Sabi niya, let's, let's read some comments bago tayo matapos. Um, uh, let, uh, ano yung VTuber? Sabi niya dyan siya. VTuber is like a anime 3D girl na YouTuber. So him, she, uh, the anime 3D girl makes content uh, as an anime 3D girl. So hindi siya person, hindi siya tao. It's an actual character, be a created anime character in sort of this sort of mocap suit or whatever. May voice actor, uh, and then content creator siya. So naglalaro siya ng games, pero yung mukha hindi na yung tao, but an actual anime character na gumagalaw-galaw. No? That's what a v, that's what a VTuber is ang um, ang term no. Uh, medyo yung origins niyan yung katulad niya no. Sino ba to? Sino yung uh, Vocaloid? Um, yung origins niyan because Vocaloid yung si Vocaloid na yon, I, I forgot her name. Naging popular yon and then she became sir ano animatronic na 3D character na gumagawa ng content and then si ano nagkaroon na ng iba pa iba ibang gumagawa. Si um Oh my god, anong pangalan ng isa din? Uh, may popular dati na nakalimutan ko na yung pangalan. My god, lagi ko nakakalimutan yung pangalan. But anyway, yun yung mga anime characters na YouTubers. Uh, oh my god, uh, Kimo pala si Tita ni Tita Rainer Lizada, no? I hope, uh, I hope your mom gets better soon, uh, Kuya Rainer, no? Um, Asus ROG Phone 2 Strix Edition masyado na late sa Philippine market. Hatsune Miko, thank you Kyle Guerrero. Um, may isa akong anong pangalan <sighs> yung white and red yung damit. Ah, wag na natin ano hin. Uh, yung isa sa mga pinakamatagal na VTuber. Um, let's see mas affordable ba? Uh, Xiaomi Black Shark 2 at Pro 2 Pro late na sila nag-release. But the Xiaomi Black Shark doesn't have a no high refresh rate display though. Which is okay lang kasi most games still don't support high refresh rate displays. But Black Shark 2 is very good nga. Ah, uh, yung palang sinabay nila ng 8120. Ah, uh, sayang wala na yung Zenfone dito sa Pinas. Wala na talaga. Quits na si ano, RIP Zenfone na talaga. Um Bili ka na lang na Black Shark 2 Pro 12GB 256 399 490. Wow, okay. Yeah, Black Shark 2, I like it as well. Um, yun nga lang hindi siya hindi siya well. Hindi pa rin siya technically uh, 90 Hz or 120 Hz, no. Ah, uh, hindi ko alam yung kung mas nauna si Kizuna ay yon, si Kizuna ay yung isa sa mga pinakaunang VTubers. Pinapanood ko rin si Kizuna ay dati. Pero na also, sobrang uh, medyo na luma na rin si Kizuna ay kasi. Pero maganda yung boses ni Kizuna ay. Oh my god, ang ganda nung intro intro video niya. Mapupuno na naman ng VTuber yung ano ko, yung recommended ko. Ang dami kong pinanood today. Wow, dude. Naging K-pop Parang yung sayo niya ala K-pop na. Dati awkward. Oh no! May babae sa likod niya. What the heck? K-pop na... Wait. Yung mga katabi niya ba K-pop? Hindi naman siguro. But uh, very K-pop style na tong dance niya. Pati yung damit niya. Yan. Very K-pop. Ano? Uh, yung traditional Kizuna ay is... School girl outfit. Hanap tayo ng most popular Kizuna Eye video. Uh, all videos. Most popular niya. Ay, bakit? Kasi mayroon pang ganito. Uploads. Gusto ko yung pinakamaraming views. Oh no, huwag yung play all. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh my god, nag smr na rin si Kizuna Eye. What the hell? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ay, no. Buhay. Uh, 
At so, hindi ko alam kung mas nauna si Kizuna ay bago sumunod ang iba. Yeah, anyway, yun na nga, hindi ko alam. But, uh, isa sa mga naging popular si Kizuna ay na VTuber. Isa sa mga, bago na uso yung pangalang VTuber, no? Um, wala pang pangalang VTuber no nauna na si Kizuna ay. So, technically considered as VTuber siya, pero before nag, before pa na-coin yung term na VTuber, nandun na siya. Alright guys, so ayun ang ating show. Maraming salamat sa pagkapanood. Wala na tayong topics. That's uh, medyo na encov na encov ang topics natin because uh, marami sa mga produkto galing pa rin ng China. Si Samsung daw yung makaka- makikinabang ng uh, na- nagkaroon dahil sa encov because uh, yung telepono nila naglo-launch pa rin sila kahit walang uh, kahit nag nag kahit may yung nahihirapan maraming Chinese brands kasi na encov sila. Si Samsung Sam, uh, is a is a Korean brand. So technically hindi sila masyado nahihirapan although marami pa rin silang uh, actual uh, electronic components sa galing sa China. But sa, mo, a lot of their components also come from Korea. So uh, less hirap sa coronavirus concerns. Anyway, maraming salamat sa pagpapanood. That's our big time show for Saturday 2-22-2020 Sasa naman sa mga num- ano, this, uh, Dates na puro 2 0 Tawagan Tawagan nyo ako pag 2 22 na <laughs> uh, Anong say mo sa S-Bobar Ano? S-Bobar Fold 2? Ayan ba yung ano? Yung kamukha nung Ayan ba yung kamukha nung Galaxy Fold? Yeah, ito ngayon. Escobar Fold. Oh, mukha siya Galaxy Fold. Bakit puro babae? What? Oh my God. Oh, ano? Sando Gaming? Tadami viewers natin, may Sando Gaming tayo Bra Gaming $400 Wait, pati yung software mo ang Samsung? Yung, tingnan mo yung Tingnan mo yung icons Samsung icons Pero parang hindi maganda yung display. Hindi ganun ka... Kasi usually... Oh my God, si ate. Didemonetize tayo. Mukhang interesting, pero feeling ko hindi ganun kataas yung... Hindi kasing ganda ng quality as yung original Samsung Fold, ano? Um, pero kung gusto mo lang, $400, that's not too bad. Tingnan natin. Snapdragon 855, 12 megapixel... Ah, nako, ang hirap basahin. Number 2 is 12 megapixel telephoto. Okay, with OIS. Yung yung ori- yung main camera is 12 megapixel OIS, 16 megapixel ultra wide. What? Okay, and then yung selfie niya is 10 plus 8 depth sensor, 8 gig RAM. Parang kinopya pati yung specs. Uh, display main folded dynamic AMOLED capacitive touchscreen 1536 by 2152 Huh? Uh, wala siya dito Wala si Escobar dito sa GSM Arena Bakit? Wala. Wala, sa, wala si Escobar dito. Interesting siya. Although, yun nga, feeling ko hindi ganun kasi yung quality. Feeling ko nga yung specs barang dinaya eh. Feeling ko hindi kasing ganda rin yung camera, for example. Imposible No? No? Um, itong front display... Ano ba talaga yung front display nito? Hindi ba 1080p yung front display ni Galaxy Fold? 
Um, ah, hindi, 720. Pareho yung display. 1680 by 720. Parang scam, ano, Mark Roger? Pero may videos yan, eh. Sino ba to? Wala palang video. Dito may video si, ano, si uh, Unbox Therapy, oh. Escobar Fall 2 is likely as big a scam as Escobar 1. Um, <clears throat> the biological brother of Pablo Escobar? Wait, kapatid niya si Pablo Escobar? What the heck? Tsaka imposible yung kaya nilang gumawa ng folding display for $400? We almost certainly a scam. Buyers still haven't seen Escobar Fold 1, so giving Escobar another $400 with... Uh, yeah, okay. So I get it. I get it now. Uh, supposedly, parang, siguro nagparang Kickstarter, quote-unquote siya, ng uh, Escobar Fold 1, and hindi niya pa pinapadala yung Escobar Fold 1. So that means yung pinadala kay Unbox Therapy is most likely at uh, ano, ang tag dito, ang tag doon. Pinadalan si ano eh. Si ilan yung pinadala niya? So pinadala niya si Tech Avid o si Unbox Therapy. Malamang nagpadala siya ng prototypes. Or bumili siya ng Galaxy Fold. Sinira niya. Gumawa, nirebrand niya. Oh, bakit gano'n? Ang pangit ang branding. Ah! That looks like a Galaxy Fold. It's ready to go. Escobar Inc. established 1984. SM-F900S. Oh! Yung software niya talaga Samsung na Samsung eh. Model number SSM dash. Ay that's, a, that's the same model as a Fold. SM dash F nine hundred F. Ano ano na sulat? Anong model? SM dash F F nine hundred F pala. Ayun you know, o, SM-F900 Sa Galaxy Fold, nilagyan niya lang ng branding Tapos yung nangi-scam siya F900S Like the Galaxy Fold You have the front display And then you open it up to the bigger one Wait In the package, USB Type-C cable Okay, okay, ito, 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 ito If hindi sinabi ni Unbox Therapy na ano to, na scam ito Galit ako, magagalit ako kay Unbox Therapy. It's very clear na, ano, Galaxy Fold lang ito. Nalilagyan niya ng branding. This fake, man. Wow, check this out. 100 plus billion USD earned since the Sabbath. Come on, man. What can I do with this, dude? How many of these do you think are in existence? A thousand. Some kind of a marketing thing you get people talking. Because it worked, right? And then people start chatting because you have the Escobar name, which is famous, and people know. Why is this? What is this? It's really the Unbox Therapy, not the reviewer. But he is in, into the text space, the text scene. Naniniwala siya ang totoo ito? It's a Galaxy Fold! The software is the Galaxy Fold! What a weird... Ano to? Scam, 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 scam. Kasi lahat ng ano, lahat ng pati yung software, pati yung model number, Galaxy Fold, Galaxy Fold yan. 
for sure. Nilagyan niya yung branding tapos nilol nang loloko siya sa website niya. Grabe. Tapos na uto si ano si Lou. Wait, wait, bakit? Pero gusto ko yung mga video. Maraming mga ate. <laughs> Nakapikit yung ano, yung si babae sa thumbnail. My God, ayusin nyo naman, Pablo Escobar. Anyway. <laughs> Natawa ako dun eh. Um, Encove Galore Topics, nakakasira ng production. Escobar Folds. Um, yeah, thank you Mark Roger. Medyo na... Na-weirdohan ako. Akala ko... Um, class A or Class B na copy. No? Kasi most likely naman may gagaya din naman sa Galaxy Fold eh. So I thought it was like a class A, class B copy. Hindi eh. Exact. Kung bumili siya ng Galaxy Fold, nilagyan niya ng plate sa likod, nilagyan niya ng Galaxy Fold, ano, Escobar branding sa likod. Na napagkapangit-pangit ng pagkaprint dun sa brass, dun sa plate na nilagyan niya sa likod. Ang pangit tignan nung nilagyan niya sa likod, no? Very, very clear na fake Uh, yung materials na ginamit niya because yung printing pa lang and what not and it's very clearly a galaxy fold sa ano so the escobar time so <laughs> anyway yun ang ating show maraming salamat sa pagkapanood wag na tayong abot ng alas 12 para medyo ano basically naka naka 2 hours din tayo kasi nag start ako ng mga 11, uh, 10 ano eh 2 hours 1 hour Nag-start ako ng 9.40 plus. So, 2 hours. Okay. That's it for our show. Maraming salamat po panood. That's been a big time show for 2.22.2020. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you guys next week. Hopefully, meron pa tayong mga topics sa pag-uusapan. Hopefully, uh, mawala na si Encov uh, para medyo ma makaluwag na tayo ang Pilipinas, makaluwag na ang China, makaluwag na ang buong mundo. Nakakatakot ang Encov, no? Uh, meron ako napanood yung color gold sticker yon I get you. Ah, yeah. That, might, that most likely explains it, no? Uh, I was hoping hindi siya sticker. I was hoping actually gumawa siya ng actual metal na back para lang ipalit dun sa actual back ng Galaxy Fold. But sticker makes more sense kung talagang fly-by-night operation ka. Nagagawa ka lang ng fake na Galaxy Fold. Daglagan mo lang ng sticker? That makes sense, no? Uh, I was hoping na mas professional yung development nila na gumaman lang sila ng actual na bakal na likod but I think sticker makes more sense. Okay. That's it for the show. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you guys next week. Bye! Yeah. <coughs>